Greetings and welcome to a new video. We start with a new series about electric circuits and in this video, first video about a mesh current method. And we specifically also discuss the DC analysis only and in other videos and other series we will also discuss more about AC analysis. And this will be our example number one as said before so we will work out the calculations step by step and also verify these in spice simulations so let's look at our example we have the following circuit so we have the circuit with the two sources va and vb those are dc voltage sources given here in green and we have r1 r2 and r3 as the resistors in our circuit now using mesh current method or mesh current analysis we would like to calculate the currents I1, I2 and I3 and those are actually shown here. So this is the orientation I have chosen for this example. So going from left to right for R1 because the current flows from the plus to the minus side as a convention. That's the current flow. The actual flow of the electrons will be in the opposite direction. The I2 is also shown here, also my own choice. So you can have also, also this plus and this minus and then the current will flow in this direction. Now I3, I have also chosen the plus and the minus for the R3 and you have this current. So this is really the choice I make here. You can have a different choice but the results will be exact the same. Now question B is actually asking for the power delivered by this DC voltage source VA. So we have actually two, qu uh, two questions and one of them about the currents, another about just the power. Okay, how do we work this out? Let's go through this uh, solution step by step. Step one is actually choose the loop directions. So we need to use the mesh current analysis or mesh current methods and we need to set up the loop equations or the loop, uh, let's say, uh, the voltage equations. So we have to choose a direction for our loops and also the number of loops. I see here another uh, a loop here and also a loop there. So we have actually two loops and you can also name them. So let's then choose this loop and call this Ix, the current Ix in his, this direction. And also I just also choose this direction and this is Iy. So this is also random. So you can also choose the other way. So you can also do the counterclockwise for each of them or just one of them. It doesn't matter again, the results will be exact same. Okay, now for loop X, since I have defined my direction in this form, so the clockwise direction, I start at this point, that's, that's the ground, the reference, electric reference point. Then I see actually the following. I see first the minus and then the plus of this VA voltage source. That's actually minus VA. Then the other, actually the following, because I see R1 and R2 for this situation as a plus. Because that is in the same direction for my current. But this current IY, which is a part of the current here and through R2, is actually fighting back this current flow in this first uh, loop, the loop in Ix. And that's what you see here, minus R2 times Iy. So you collect actually the two resistors together and then multiply that by the Ix and you do minus, which is actually fighting back, which is only the Iy for the case of R2. Now add them up and then you equate that to zero. So that's what you have here. Now for loop Y in a similar form, because you start now here, and that is now your positive direction of the current. R2 and R3 will have this IY together. And you also see plus and a minus first. So you actually have also plus VB. But the IX is now fighting actually back for this current direction for IY. So now you have minus R2 IX. So I do actually that in the same format. Then you have plus the summation of R2 plus R3 times the IY and then plus VB because you see first if you do the count the clockwise direction you see first the plus and then the minus and that will be equal to zero. Now that's just the first step to set up the equations using the uh, loop direction you have chosen. Now then you write the loop equation for each loop and then also write down and uh, substitute the values here so these are the loop equations. Let's also write down what we 
to substitute the values what we have here. Now, that will be the minus 2 because that was 2. It will be 10 plus 20, so it will be here. And also minus 20 because R2 is 20. That will be just 0. Now, let's also simple, uh, collect these in this form. So we have the unknowns left and also the constant on the right side. So this is 30ix minus 20iy is equal to 2. And let's call this just equation number 1. And in a similar form, you do that for loop y. Now, that is just this equation. You substitute the values for r2, r3, and also the vb. We have everything. We get this. So, that will be 20 plus 60 it will be 80. And that goes to the right direction because you need to constant at the right direction. You have this form for equation number 2. Okay. Now, step 2 is now done. Let's go to step 3, which is actually solve the unknowns. We have a couple of unknowns here, so we need to solve them. Before we can solve i1, i2 and i3, we need to solve actually ix and iy. From there we get the i1, i2 and i3. Now let's bring the two equations we have, so our equation number 1 and 2 here together on top of each other. And we can solve this in different ways, so you can say, okay, I will put it in a matrix vector form and I'll solve uh, the coefficients for i1 and i2, ix and iy, or you say, I just multiply one of the equations such that I have something which can be added together or subtracted from each other, and then I only have one unknown. I do the second one, I show you what I do, uh, step by step. So what I do is actually the following. I recognize here that will be 80 iy, and I have here minus 20 iy. Now this is actually, this one, the second equation has actually four times larger iy. If I now multiply this equation, so equation number 1, by 4, I need to multiply, of course, this by 4, this by 4, and also this, I have the following. So 4 times 30 will be 120 ix, minus 20 iy will be then minus 80 iy, and it will be 2 times 4 will be 8. Okay, what do I have gained now? If I place this directly underneath this equation, I see now minus 80 iy and plus 80 iy. So if I add them up, I can do that. So add them up, then you will get 3, 0, 0 times iy and 100 ix. So I have eliminated one of the unknowns. That's actually the purpose of doing this step. You can also say I don't, I don't like to start with iy, I would like to eliminate ix, that's also fine. You can also multiply the second equation by 1.5, then you will get here minus 30, and you will eliminate it when you add them up, the ix, and you will calculate iy. So this is not specifically this step. Okay, now we have this. So 100 ix plus 0 times iy is 3. So you have only one unknown. Now moving on, you will get this, and then you can calculate ix by 3 over 100, or 0 0.03. That is, of course, in amperes. That's the unit of this current. Okay, now we have the ix. Now we can calculate iy, because we can use this equation, or that okay, equation, using this number we know from ix. That is 0 0.03. So let's bring this, the first equation, 30 times this number. Minus, so 30 times 0 0.03, minus 20 times what we need to know, calculate, is equal to 2. Now I can calculate this, it will be 0 0.9, minus 20 iy is equal to 2. Now bring this to the right hand side, so subtract the left and right hand side by um, uh, 0 0.9. You will get minus 20 iy is equal to 1.1. Now, in order to calculate iy, it's straightforward business, you do 1.1 over minus 20, you will get z minus 0 0.055 amps. So I also have the IY. So I have now two loop currents for this circuit. Now, in summary, you have an IX of 0 0.03 and IY of minus 0 0.055 amps, or in milliamps, you'll get 30 milliamps for IX and minus 55 milliamps for IY. Okay, let's move on. Because we need this information to calculate I1, I2, I3, and also the, the power delivered in question B. 
So then we get the following. Now let's recognize in our circuit what we have. Because we have the f uh, uh, several things here. We have I1 is equal to Ix because that's in the same direction because Ix is flowing in this part of the circuit and I1 is only Ix. So I can say I1 is Ix. That's just 30 milliamps or 0.03 amps. I2 in my direction is Ix minus Iy because the Iy is actually circling in this form and Ix is circling in this form. So I2 is Ix minus Iy. That's as shown here. Now if I now substitute these two values 0.03 minus minus 0.055 you will get 0.085 amps or 85 milliamps. I3, the final one, is just IY because it's in the same direction and it's only the IY. So we can see this directly and it will be then minus 0.055 amps. So we have now everything for question A, for the current. Now moving on to the question B, it's power delivered. That's actually the for this uh, source, VA. That's actually PA is equal to V a times i a so it's actually the generic formula v times i and i've specifically chosen the current for this dc source dc voltage source and that's actually this current flow and if i look at it i a is exactly equal to i1 or exactly equal to i x so i can say that's also 0.03 or 30 milliamps so let's then substitute 2 and multiply it by 0.03 you will get 0.06 watts or 60 milliwatts. That's the power I will get from this source, for this circuit specifically. Okay, now let's go to the simulation results. This is the circuit I have drawing in the spice. You can see the VA, VB, 2 in a 5 volts, 10, 20 and a 60 ohms for the circuit. These nodes, 1, 2, 3 and a 0 are the nodes you can use to see what the potential is or the voltages between these two nodes and also the current flow uh, when you uh, let's say determine the currents. Now the table I generate from this is the following. You can see actually the following I underscore R1 is actually from node 1 to node 2 from this node to that node. This current the same direction we have chosen to the simulator has chosen actually the same direction at 30 milliamps and we had also 30 milliamps. So that's correct. That's the verification from the simulation. I underscore R2 is actually going from node 2 to 0. So node 2 to 0 because this is 0 ground. This is same 0. This is also same 0. So from 2 to 0. That's 85 milliamps. Oh, 85 milliamps also here. That's also correct, so that is nice. The next one is R3, because that is then this current, I underscore R3, you can see from two to three, so from this node to that node, that is minus 55 milliamps, exactly what we have here. So we also see other information, we don't actually ask for this question, you also see, for example, the voltage across this, uh, resistor and also across this and also across this. Let's check this. For across this resistor, it will be of course the current through it, which is 0 0.03 times 10 will be then 0. Point, let me check that. that is this one. So it'll be then 0 0.3 volts or 300 millivolts. So that's also what you see directly from this table. So you get more information actually when you do the simulations. All right, now we have verified our calculations and also seen how we can do this using the mesh current method. In the next videos, I will give you more examples, more complicated examples about this same method, but also move on to another method like the nodal analysis or node voltage analysis, superposition, Thevenin, and Norton, and also other methods we use when you want to analyze your electric circuit. I would like to also show you this, how you can do this in the simulator by yourself. So let's jump to that part and then close this session. 
All right, now we are in the simulator. This is a Tina Ti Spice simulation uh, program. I have here my DC voltage to VA and VB, so you can add them using this. So this is the battery, so you can add them and then change here your value. Let's say you make this, uh, uh, let's say 11 and just give a name, let's say VC, another voltage source and you can add them up also here. Okay, now the resistors can be found here. There's the resistor. You have also other components like capacitor and inductor, etc. And then if you just double click on it, you can just change the value. Now I've already uh, prepared this so that we can save time. So 10, 20, 60 ohms for the resistors and 2 and 5 volts for the voltage sources, DC voltage sources. Okay, you go to analysis and do DC analysis and you do table of DC results or you can do also calculate the null voltages then you can select specifically the uh, let's say the component but the tables are nice so let's do that this is the table this is actually which yeah, let me make it a little bit larger if I now click on a specific component you can see it will be highlighted here in red so that will be then like this you can see its voltage I mean the current and its spe uh, specified voltage so we 30 milliamps here, I1 actually we had, and we also 0 0.3 volts because that wasn't the question, but we have both of them. If I click on this, R2, that is the current flow from top to bottom, you can see it is 85 milliamps and also specified its voltage. The final one, this, it is then minus 55 milliamps and also its own voltage. So you can see how that can be checked also in the simulator. All right, this is for this example about mesh current analysis or mesh current method in an electric circuit. This is example number one, literally actually relatively simple example. As said, I will discuss more challenging examples to illustrate the concept in great detail and also see other methods like node voltage analysis, superposition, Thevenin and Norton theorem using number of examples. So stay tuned and if you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another interesting video. Take care.